Hello students, welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In today's lesson, we are going to start a new topic called force. And remember, when we discussed the branches of physics, one of the branch of physics was mechanics. And in mechanics, we defined it as the study of motion of bodies under the influence of force. So the force which causes motion in mechanics is the one which we are going to discuss in this topic. And we are going to realize that almost all everyday activities we involve a force right from walking. Do you know that walking you require a force which is called action and reaction force? Do you know that for you to write you need a friction force for a pencil to stick on the book? and many other things which we are going to discuss in this lesson. So my name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy this lesson and this topic in general. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define a force and then state the SI unit of force and then state at least five or even 10 types of forces and then finally, state the effect of forces. So what is force? Force refers to a push or a pull that results from interaction of bodies. So for a push to be there or a pull to be there, the two bodies must interact. Like you can see on the screen, the boy is pushing the box away from him. Then here is pulling the box. Pull is pulling the box towards his side. So another thing that you should note is that any change of motion of a body is caused by a force. And the SI unit of force is Newton. The SI unit of force is Newton. And it does not have a problem. There's no Newtons. It's Newton. And the symbol is given as capital N. Newton was the person who discovered force. We call him Isaac Newton. That's why the SI unit start with a capital letter. Newton, N, capital. Because it's a name of a person. Then force has both magnitude. Magnitude is a number. So we assign forces a number like 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. And then... Uh, a force also has direction. It has a direction. And the direction in this case, we are going to give it either north, south, east, west, right, left, front, back. We can give so long as it's giving a specific direction. So a force must have both magnitude and direction. Like in this case, we can decide to give it uh, 5 newtons. And then direction, you can say even east it's moving eastwards so this force in this case it is its magnitude is five newton any number that you see that is a, a magnitude and then it's moving east that's direction and then we represent it by a line a straight line with an arrow so whenever you see now from today in physics when you see a straight line having an arrow that is automatically a force. So a force is represented by a line with an arrow. And in physics, that is the only thing which has a line, straight line, and an arrow. It's a force. Therefore, the length of the line shows the magnitude of the force. So if you measure the length, the distance between this point and that point, this length here, then it will give you the magnitude. For example, if you get 5 newtons, so it will give you a magnitude. If you get 5 centimeters, then it will be 5 newtons in that case. And now if you need to know the direction, then at the beginning of this force, you draw a compass direction that's north, south, east, west. Then now this force is moving in the east direction. So now your answer will be 5 newtons east. 
Now, if you have another one like this, let's, uh, let's say you have an, a line like that, then in this case, you are, if you are required to find the, 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 the answer or for this or the magnitude of this force, then what you do, you take a ruler and measure the length between here and here. Then what you get, let's say you get two newtons. Then at the beginning of the force, you draw your compass direction. This is north, south, east, west. So in this case, it's moving, uh, it's moving northwards. So it is going to be two newton north. Very important. Direction is very important because we said a force has a magnitude and direction. We are going to see this when we are going to discuss results and vectors. And the final case that I'm going to just highlight is, for example, if you have two forces, one is moving in this direction, and when it reaches here, it decides to change direction upwards. Now, in case now you want to know the, 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 the magnitude of this force, then you only draw a compass direction at the beginning. North, south, east, west then now this force we don't follow the route that it has followed we're only interested from the beginning to the end of the force so here our force has gone through this route and now it is there so if we should find the magnitude we we'll only find this uh, distance there so in this case you will use a, a meter rule or a, your, your rule to measure from this point to this point and then when you get x x you will assign to newtons but now in what direction this is north east north east direction so like that so the the the, the length represents the magnitude and then the arrow will show us the direction we are going to discuss this more on result and vector that is the last subtopic of this topic so we, we have uh, many types of forces and the first force here is weight. Weight is the pull of gravity of a body towards the ground. So we are going to calculate it as mass times gravitational field strength. We are going to discuss it at the end of this topic. Then we have tension of force. This is a force on the spring. We are going to discuss it. Then we have adhesive and cohesive force. These are intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces. I hope you have discussed them in chemistry. We are also going to discuss them here. Then we have upthrust force. This is the force which makes bodies to float on water and the bodies which makes even uh, bodies feel weightless when they are inside water. We are going to discuss it. And then we have the total force. This is a force which makes uh, bodies to move into the circle. Like when a car is trying to negotiate a corner, it tries to skid when it is negotiating a corner. The force which makes it uh, to be in that position is centripetal force. This is also a force which keeps the earth on its own orbit when it's revolving around the sun. We also have frictional force. A force which opposes motion and it has very diverse effects and even advantages and few disadvantages. And then we have magnetic force. This is a force between two magnets or two poles of a magnet. And we are going to realize it has a very useful uh, in a production of electricity. Then we have surface tension force. Uh, this is a force which makes uh, house flies mosquitoes to float on water then we have finally electrostatic force electrostatic force is a force which is makes uh produces cracking sound or flashes of light when you are removing a nylon cloth we are going to discuss it uh, as we proceed with this topic so the forces we have just mentioned have very many effects on motion of objects and the first uh effect is that a force can make an, a stationary object to move so if this girl was holding this ball at the top here it was stationary it was not moving but when she releases it there is a force which makes this ball to slide down 
that force we are going to call it gravitational force so forces can make an object to move for example if you want to move a chair so you have to carry it you are either pulling it or pushing it or even lifting it so in that case you have used a force to make a stationary object to move then we have another effect is that it can increase the speed of a moving object let's say you are pedaling a bicycle slowly and then now when you decide to increase the pedaling speed or the pedaling force then the bicycle will move at a very high speed so in that case it has increased the speed of a moving object then it can stop a moving object like in this case we are going to realize when you are riding a bicycle there is air resistance you feel like there is air which is pushing you back we are going to call it viscosity we are going to call it viscosity viscosity is friction friction in air or in fluids so it can also make oppose motion or it can make a uh, slow down or stop a moving object so the fourth effect of force is that it can decrease the speed of a moving object like you can see on the screen the girl is trying to push this box to move in this direction but we have a force here called frictional force which is opposing the motion so in this case the force that the girl is giving out or the push that the girl is giving is not proportional to the motion which this body is undergoing because there is a force which is uh, slowing it down in that case it has decreased the motion of that object another effect is that it can change the shape it can change the shape of an object like in this case you can see we have few metallic cans here and their shape is totally dismantled or deformed this means someone either stepped on them in that case they are, he has pushed them or knocked them using a hammer in that case it's also a push uh, and they have changed the shape or deformed uh, the shape of the object another effect of force is that it can make an object to turn about a fixed point which we call the pivot so a force can cause an object to turn like on the screen in the first picture you can see there's a, a vulcrum that is a the, the, the pivot and then this load here since it has weight weight we said we calculate as mass times gravity and weight is a good example of a force it has made this uh, uh, beam to turn so in that case it has caused a turning effect and turning effect of a force is a topic in form two we'll discuss this one in form two the third topic which we call the turning effect of a force then another effect of force is that it can change the direction of a moving object those boys you like uh, football now someone has kicked the ball to your side and then you are a goalkeeper then now you want to change the direction to the opponent side when you are kicking a moving ball so that it can change direction in that case you have changed the direction of an object and you have used a force so we have discussed force and we have defined a force as a push or a pull when bodies interact and we have discussed or highlighted few examples of forces examples of forces from weight magnetic force electrostatic force centripetal force etc and then finally we have looked at effects of force effects of a force where we have said it can change the shape of, a, of an object it can cause a turning effect it can change the direction it can even make a stationary object to move